how do you make things work in this space is a challenge that many operators and organisations struggle in normal normal organisations, but it's particularly particularly tough where the domain is complex. Where we're a small consultancy uh, focused on betting and gaming technology with our real ethos of trying to make gaming technology better. And our network, as you can imagine, from 100 years plus, I think is quite, la quite large. There's not much we haven't come across. So yeah, yeah, I mean, this has been a wealth of information. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I talk much less than the rest of Circle Squared, so I think That's that, good. Uh, <laughs> you're speaking for all their 100 years of experience. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sports Betting Conversations. Today, we're joined by Graham Castle, co-founder of Circle Squared. Uh, Graham, please introduce yourself and tell us a little about what you do. Hi, gents. My, my name's Graham, as yeah. you've, you've, already, uh, you've already said. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Circle Squared. Uh, I've been working in the betting and gaming space for quite a long time, so 25 years plus and I've been lucky enough to work with some brilliant teams for some brilliant organizations uh, on a variety of things. I'm typically technology-based, uh, but I think if I had to sort of summarize how, how I've worked over my career, it would be I would work with a stakeholder in an organization. They would ask me to go and work out how to do something in, in this space, so a new trading platform, a sports book, a front-end or whatever else. I would spend the time doing the architecture and the design for that with, with the, the teams. Typically, they would ask me to go and help them get buy-in to do to get, to get those projects off the ground. I would help them do that. They would then ask me to go and build them and then run them. And really, the only difference is that, uh, the size and scale and the number of, uh, number of people and teams and concurrent projects that, uh, uh, that, I, that I was looking after. I've done that for a number of uh, number of organisations. So, a majority of my career at Ladbrokes I helped design and build quite a lot of the retail architecture there before moving on more into the back back end of sportsbook and trading. Ran a number of teams there, ran a number of programs and, and projects uh, for them, and then so towards the end of that, helped quite a lot with the, some of the enterprise architecture and design and uh, transformation piece around the Labrooks Coral merger, which was one of the precursors to the the Entain uh, Entain organisation. I did that for quite quite a long time. Went off and tried my hand at uh, being a CIO at uh, a uh, number of other number of other places. Enjoyed them. Didn't get quite the same buzz I, as I had from this industry, but you guys will know and. Hopefully, anybody who's listening will know is that there's a lot to offer in this space to a technologist and someone who likes sport in particular uh, to get stuck in, in into and to and to sort of enjoy enjoy. And the pace is pretty relentless. And when you compare that with something like financial services, which I went to do, which was meant to be as quick and as pacey, it just wasn't. Uh, so, so I ended up. Uh, Actually, going to help out uh, Paddy Power and Betfair, which then went on to become Flutter, and I ran all of technology for Paddy Power and Betfair for a number of years, looking after everything from back end to front end, um, uh, the exchange platform, all the customer systems, and all those sorts of things. And that actually is part of the Flutter uh, Flutter uh, sort of um, ascendancy. Started to become actually the the provider of shared platforms for the Flutter group. And I'm very proud to work with the team there on a number of things that actually have then gone on to set the foundation for what's happening around the world in terms of in terms of that. So one of the platforms that's used by FanDuel, uh, GBP is something that I was I was a, a part of and lucky to run run the teams that were helping to deliver that. So that that's a, a very very uh, very quick uh, potted history up until now. I'm now part of Circle Squared. We're a small consultancy uh, focused on betting and gaming technology with our real ethos of trying to make gaming technology better. Uh, there are there are four of us. Uh, we have a range of skills across sort of transformate transformation technology, but also some pretty deep product knowledge and. A number of my colleagues have been involved in building really sort of groundbreaking systems across across the world, really. So most uh, most in the in the UK, but quite a lot in the US, and and more and more around the around the world around the world. Um, so yeah, so I think that's sort of me in a me in a, in a nutshell. We, we've been 
We've been together for about two years. We've known each other for much longer. One of the great things about Circle Squared is I, I get on well with all the team. I enjoy working with them. I know the quality that they have. Hopefully they think the same about <laughs> same about me. And um, I think we are we are pretty uh, honest and hopefully have quite a lot of integrity. We're quite keen on doing it as well as we can and helping people get the right result for them. And, and having been in the industry, I think we've probably got about 100 years plus of experience between us. We've seen it done quite badly and made difficult made difficult and made made challenging. And we're quite, um, we're quite keen for that not to happen and, and to help where we can. So that's a bit of a, our, our mission um, and a little bit about me. Hopefully that's, uh, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's a great intro. Uh, very good sense of your background. Um, so th thank you for that. We appreciate it. So <clears throat> focusing on what you're doing today, um, you know, you're running a lean shop. You have, sounds like, a, I don't know, probably collectively close to 100 years of experience between all, all your mates. Um, what what are some of the things that um, you're focusing on in, 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 the, in the gaming space um, or, or, or what are clients most coming in with for for help yeah so we've got really three three main areas of our business so the first one unsurprisingly is that sort of consultancy consultancy piece really bringing some of that experience across technology product and transformation to try and try and help people out we get asked to do quite a lot in that space so there's a fair bit of delivery you know actually getting stuff done how do you make things work in this space is a challenge that many operators and organizations struggle in normal normal organizations but it's particularly particularly tough where the domain is complex or the customers are challenging or you know that there's all, a, a, all manner of um, complexity to try and resolve but often people come in and, and say this isn't going particularly well will you come and help us get this across the line so that's what one chunk of the consultancy work obviously we provide quite a lot of sort of product expertise and techno technology expertise in in, in the space and what we are finding quite a lot and we're getting quite a lot of requests for is that it's to help people with uh, what we call capability assessment and that's really a I suppose a holistic sort of evaluation of how well a platform a team an organization is doing against its business objectives and we we try and make that as practical as practical as possible really looking at the uh, the interplay between technology people process and the product how that interacts with each other and how it meets the objectives that an organization has. Now, we've tried as far as possible to sort of template this and make it simple to, simple to interact with because what I've certainly found is working in some of these big organizations, you get lots of management consultants coming in and telling you sort of organizationally what was wrong, but not really how that contributes to actually what you're getting out of the other side of it. And we found that actually the way that we present that data in sort of fairly simple, I suppose, rag, rag terms, like are you able to make a change quickly? Do the teams feel empowered? Are they, is the product fit for purpose? Does it does it match up to what someone else is doing? Is offering real insight to, to, our, uh, to our customers in such a way that they're able to really, really quickly um, devise priority plans to tackle the things that are stopping them. And we've gained quite a lot of traction of, uh, uh, on that. And that, that's one one uh, aspect of our analysis. What uh, sort of a, a, an addition to that is, we have to do quite a lot of due diligence, both across sort of the tech tech stack, but also product stack, and that includes uh, like assessing assessing a target's readiness for expansion, or is it a good tech stack to go and use in a different brand and those sorts of things. So we get asked to do that quite quite a lot, and. I'm very proud uh, that that people come in asking us and trust our opinion on, on that. It means that we're doing something right and sort of talks a little bit to that to that um, uh, sort of integrity and honesty honesty thing. It's important to us that thing, and people are, are actually asking and coming coming taking our advice, which is which is great. So I suppose there's a big bucket of consultancy things like product ideation, delivery, capability assessments of, of all of all kinds. <laughs> Uh, and, and you know we've got a good mix of mix of requests to help people with that, which is great. I think the second thing that we help with quite a bit is 
Well, this is, uh, as I've mentioned, this is quite a complex domain. You know, people struggle to get to the bottom of how to deliver well and how to deliver really great product in this in this space. And our network, as you can imagine, from 100 years plus, I think is quite, la quite large. There's not much we haven't come across or don't know a person or a team that can help with it. And we often get asked quite a lot to, to go and help people with pretty niche sometimes requirements, whether that's a trading assessment, whether that's um, some data migration work of a particular type. Um, quite often we, 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 we help people, uh, help people sort of put people together, I, I think. And that's, that's really in, in, in relation to that sort of idea of trying to help people help themselves, a bit, help themselves a bit. Uh, the third thing that we, we do, which is, which is new, something that we plan to do for quite a while, uh, but we expected it to take a bit a bit longer was some product development. We have all worked in technology teams working on building building stuff, and most recently we've started on the uh, on the delivery of our sports book sports book and trading platform, which we hope to be able to sort of offer in a, in a more more unusual way, I think, to to what's out there at the minute. So yeah, that came a bit quicker than we were expecting. Great opportunity for it. We have a. We have the, the the basis of a really great system, and I think that plays into something that we're seeing quite a lot in in our in our con, uh, from our consultancy work, which is there's quite a lot of dissatisfaction with the status quo. So you have to go and work with a very big operator if you're not spending lots of money with them. You'll find yourself down the pecking order for what what products and features you might get. And similarly for white labels, they become very very vanilla. So you get the same just colored a different colored a different way and what we felt over recent times is the barriers to entry in this space are much lower than they were when certainly when i started you know when the need to have a sportsbook platform you needed a full data center to be able to operate it and an army of uh, manual operators and all sorts of like quirky technology to get the power performance and power that you needed to do to do something really robustly is not there anymore. People's capability to move in this sort of space is much, is much, um, is much greater than it was. People are digital natives, not like when I when I started. You know, so they're key, they're clear and understand dev process and how to do this quite quite quickly. And we think that that opens up a really really interesting opportunity for those people who are just a bit dissatisfied with what's what's going on right now. So I suppose that I, I, I can talk for, uh, for England, as you uh, as you can probably probably tell. Hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into the sort of stuff that uh, we're involved with. But as a, if it, if I haven't been involved with it, one of Circle Squared as a as a as a part of the team will have been involved in something in this space at some at some point, I would think. And I think our paths crossed with data art in your days at Betfair. Oh. You know, um, and, and that's why we were excited to have you on when we heard about your background, because you probably knew of, of our work. Um, yeah, so you know, from those from those days at, you know, Betfair to now, and as you look like we look, we, you know, we have 10 years experience plus with them and, and the flutter and, and, and all of that. Now, when you see a tree, when you talk about transformation, you know, you're, you're dealing with people. What is what is people coming to you most for in that transformation of their platforms? Are they looking for more content solutions, AI solutions, personalizations? Is there is there a is there a a point now where people really need to make a change in their in their technology, or what are um, you seeing? Yeah, I think the baseline for what acceptable functionality is definitely lifted up. So the things that people want. One as the baseline are much bigger, and a chunk of people come and ask us to try and help them get to that that point, and that's a noble and a decent object objective. Actually, it shows that they're thinking deeply about the product, how it how it matches up to their competitors, and how to try and win win market share. So we get that sort of ch chunk of chunk of re requests. There are then also those on top that are keen to do something a bit different and to sort of push push the envelope a little bit in terms of innovation and that's looking at uh, all those things you mentioned really in terms of how do you make a product that's more sticky that's more relevant to the generation that's going to be using it into into the future now that's been a 
like as long as I've been <laughs> been in this industry, that's been the subject of white papers and design agencies and consultancies coming into all the organisations I've worked with and said, it really should look like this. And it really should look like the Netflix of betting and that that sort of that sort of thing. But actually, there's quite a lot of decent limitation <laughs> limitations up until quite recently, I think, that have stopped people taking on any of that. And I think people are starting to cotton on to the the opportunity to go that bit further, to start to do things like personalization and to get that right and work out how that will support what they want from a product offering. So yeah, we get people asking all all sorts of all sorts of things. One of the one of the prevailing things also is expansion, scale, more jurisdictions, more people, those sorts of things. And doing that, doing that really repeatably is really hard. Really, really, really hard. You know, and something I learned from my, my time at Flutter is that shared platform vision, getting the principles for that right, making it so that you make decent changes at the centre that can affect and can support multiple jurisdictions. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of thought to get that right. right. And the effort is a bit rich for some people, to be honest, right? It's sometimes much easier to spin up a totally new instance and have you know, a whole new operational team supporting that than do the right things at the core to make that more more easily. And things like jurisdiction and legislation and regulation makes that really, really difficult. Payments differs all around the world. Being able to do that flexibly and and easily is really hard so that so that you're able to stand up a new country or jurisdiction or brand quickly is really challenging, really, really challenging. And that, that's definitely a pattern of what the big operators have done, have done. certainly through my time at Labrooks, definitely my, my experience at Flutter was, um, was, was similar. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you focus on any specific region or you're just, your clients are global? Clients tend to be global. We've been doing quite a bit more in the US most most recently, which is great. Obviously, that's a growing market. Latin America is definitely starting to, to, to turn on a, a bit more to it. And like you'll know yourselves if you keep an eye on any other sort of regulatory change around the world. Licensing changes very ra rapidly. So a country that or a state that was previously never going to be licensed or available suddenly might be on the roadmap to do and you get a scramble associated with that because market being first in there and being able to get that proposition first is really key, is, is really, really key. So, yeah, so not, not not anywhere specifically if we have a specialism or our roots are certainly in the in the UK, UK but the, in comparison, it's a, it's a static market, you know, in, in comparison to the real sort of changing user behavior around the world. Yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it sounds like you have a whole lot going on across a bunch of different places. <laughs> well, it's never built, um, I would say. I would say it's always quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and in terms of uh, kind of things, I guess, coming, I mean, we need to talk about AI just because, like, it's out there. Um, if we don't mention it, we get penalized. So, uh, <laughs> have you used it or thought about using it, like whether like in internally at Circle Squared to uh, help you, I guess, maybe automate processes or, or or what have you, or with clients in terms of helping them with yeah, the solutions. I think prob probably across the board, like we look at all, we're looking at all the tools to make our job easier. You know, we're in the process of doing some product development work. It needs good documentation, right? There are good tools that help you do that. So, you know, just from the really obvious sort of productivity supporting things, they are things that we're looking at all, all the time. I think interestingly, data, data science and AI has always been pretty, pretty, well received, I think, in in the bookmaking space for sure, and certainly within trading platforms. In terms of, you know, looking out for dodgy customers, looking out for rogue bets, you know, all those sorts of things. And they're they're constant conversations with 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 uh, operators around how do you do this better? What's the best way to try and try and establish that stuff? And that that will be a pattern that continues and gets gets much bigger, and certainly throughout throughout my 
career and, and latterly, we've used clever tools to get to the bottom of what's going on with certain certain things. That will only become stronger. The need to be able to do that becomes even stronger and can be really useful, can be a real power for good, particularly in things like the safer gambling space. So looking at people who've got problems, irregular bet betting patterns, deposit history, all that sort of stuff, and intervening <laughs> at the right time and taking the right steps, really crucial. And then to be fair to the operators, the UK operators, something they're really passionate about is in everybody's objectives within uh, in in the, uh, those organisations, and that the workforce want to get behind. They want to work for decent and ethical companies with a decent decent conscience. That means they think about the tools, and that's certainly my experience you know, over over recent time. So I think in that space, it's it's really really key. I think uh, we we had a chat uh, uh, another time about personalisation and using that and getting getting those experiences the customer to be driven more more relevantly to to those people but it's quite tough it's quite tough but and i use the uk as a um as an example it's got very rigid and ingrained betting patterns that are used people are used to seeing hierarchies and orders of events market selections prices the, the op op operators themselves are used to provide an curation to to customers so to break away from that and then to let those powerful tools dictate what people should see and the thing is a real there's a real like culture shock to people and needs a bit of that out, outside influence to be able to inform that whilst keeping the sort of uh, one eye on what does this really mean for this domain and how they, how this works so yeah we, we'll definitely see more and more of that and, and like i said for the for the better at some point, the pricing and uh, trading algorithms will become so good that there will be no <laughs> there will be no edge for a customer, no no doubt, no doubt, and the fun might go out of it for people at that point. At that point, but I think we're a little way away from that, and I think that's what's good, certainly in this in the in the sports betting world. In in that, it's always changing. It's always dynamic. There's always there's always a fly in the ointment. There's always something that's going to make the model not quite right and not quite work. And they're the they're the they're the happy and successful betting stories we want to hear from customers. Really, you know, that's why why people do it for fun and in, enjoyment. Yeah. So yeah, so it's going to be a it's going to be an interesting way of seeing how that sort of stuff pan, pans out and and forms part of all the systems that we're using. I think going going forward and just see just being. Coming more ubiquitous, to be honest. Yeah, because uh, yeah, re regulation has been kind of slow coming. I think um, in the EU, it's been a little more advanced than what we have here in the states, and I'm not sure how it is um, in Great Britain, but um, probably more regulation to come around AI. And uh, interesting how that's going to going to trickle down to. Industries yeah, like mean, sports betting and gaming. Yeah. I mean, I there's a couple of really the obvious hallucinations sort of, too. There's a couple of really obvious sort of use right. cases at the minute. You know, the exploitation of player prop markets in the US right. with players betting on their own their own outcomes. In the UK at the minute, there's a political betting scandal going going oh, on yeah. where people bet on the time That's of the thingy. So there's there's definitely the opportunity to try and expose the bookmaker has never been bigger. The opportunity to use information that you might have that someone else doesn't have has never been more tempting. And what you can probably expect over time is more patterns, more tools to try and identify that sooner and, and make sure that that's not, that's not something that's going to take a bookmaker for a lot of money, which uh, does have the potential to do in some some cases. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's actually a good point. So AI is not only helping the sports books, but it, it's going to be helping the players as well. So um, <laughs> to get to get an advantage. So that's, that should be interesting. Oh, look, yeah. Yeah. And the, the politicians. Tools, the tools to analyze sporting statistics and probabilities and things have never been more sophisticated. They get more sophisticated you know, probably every probably every day, and the more data that goes into them, the better that that they get. So at some point, I don't know, I'm surmising, yeah. but at some point we reach an impasse where the bookmaker systems are so good, and the customer systems are so good that they neutralize neutralize each other, and 
that that's that's a potential, I think, probably somewhere down the line. Yeah, yeah. Well, what else do you see kind of coming down the line in a few years? I know we still have a pretty big hill to climb with AI before it kind of plateaus in terms of what it can do and again cross with regulation how much data it can own or 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 process what do you see kind of beyond that in, in terms of two yeah. things i've sort of mentioned sort of briefly or already so i think the first one is the sort of netflix of betting and what the yeah. crossover into mm -hmm. personalization so i suppose the removal of that hierarchy that you see on pretty much every betting website and doing that seamlessly and flexibly in a mm. way that in a way that customers can interact with, you know, mapping real world events, letting them interact and throw up designs as as the user drives it rather than that sort of curation model. And I think we'll see more and more of the of that over time that's a very historical legacy it comes from the original betting platforms that had that structure and you know that forms the part of the underlying dbs that's the way they are so that translates all the way to the front end but actually don't think it needs to be like that and actually you can probably start to do some really creative things not not least because compute computing power is much bigger and better than it ever was before and opens up those opportunities to do that so I think that's 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 definitely going to be what one thing. And look, I've lost I mentioned before, I've lost count of the number of sort of design presentations that showed those big tiles of betting events and all those sorts of things. And actually I think we'll start to see some of some of those, whether they're realized through natural language or you know, whether they're overlaid onto a game that you're watching or whatever, whatever else. I think we'll start to see different and innovative ways of presenting the prop the products uh, product to the customers and I think that will be that will be really interesting I think the second one's a bit like I touched on at the beginning with our, with our platform uh, proposition is those barriers to entry are, are, redu are reducing to be able to own and run your own sports book and trading platform is getting easier and e easier and easier and I think the more people that own that the more it will drive product innovation the more opportunity it will be for people to do really niche things and it might be that you you end up with some companies that only offer a very sort of narrow subset of product, but they do it really well because they've got the opportunity to, to do it themselves, which they might not get um, by using a sort of traditional operator or white label. And I think that's going to that's going to really, really push on and probably innovate the product as much as as much as anything else. It will only take, I think, a couple of young upstarts to get the maths right, to get the data right, to get the presentation right, and to be able to do it themselves to really, really flip the industry on its on its head. And we saw that for sure in the UK quite a few years ago with, when in-play betting started to come on with things like bet builders and that. The next one of those, you know, is likely to come from one of those, one of those places that they've nailed all those, those things where they're thinking about the customer first in a way that doesn't allow the bookmaker to be get to get exploited because let's 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 face it it's an unusual industry in that customers are trying to take money off those organizations so there's sort of two two levels of two levels of development protect the business offer a decent and enjoyable customer proposition interesting yeah. i think that's good yeah. it's gonna, gonna open up some things i think yeah that's great oh yeah yeah i mean this has been a wealth of information. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's great. I mean, your 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 experience is certainly you know tr I tremendous. Talk, and I talk much less than the rest of Circle Squared, so I think that's that, good. Uh, You're <laughs> speaking for all their hundred years of experience, <laughs> all the way back to the Roman times. I okay. watch the video. <laughs> that would give some abuse, I'm sure. So. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, th thanks a bunch, Graham. We we love to have you on again, like maybe in a year to see yeah. where where you yeah, are. That's great. Uh, yeah, maybe down, someday down we'll line. partner together on a project back like you yeah, know, right. when well, your my, days my, at, at bed fair, you know, it'd be yeah, my maybe experience maybe we do, do something yeah. together. Yeah, my experience with data art at bed fair was, was, you know, was really good. They were working, or helping me work on the exchange platform, which is for those that don't know, is an engineering masterpiece to be honest. Built quite a long time ago. Unfortunately, I can't claim to have helped build it from scratch, but I can claim to have helped. Build, uh, do some work on it for for a few years 
a real you know masterpiece of engineering with such complex non-functional require non-functional and functional requirements mm -hmm. and actually the team are, team are great in helping you know support some international expansion there which was which was really great that's a really of all the domains to look after in this space exchange and getting that right is really is, is, is up there with the toughest i would i would say it is particularly challenging so that's what we're good at. The, volume, the volume that's involved with it and you can walk on it almost any trading floor around the world and there's likely to be a bet fair window open understanding what's <laughs> going on markets that's and great. possibly driving the prices you know yeah so excellent oh, Always good experience so far. So, yeah, Excellent. good to hear. We're, we're happy, and we're going to use your your quote of that. It was a masterpiece somewhere in the, in the marketing <laughs> collateral. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't help do that from the beginning, but they did. There you go. It, so. It's like a movie review, a masterpiece. Asked, yeah, by data. I, 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 I had to put my hands up and say I didn't help build it from the beginning there either. You so you know, I would like to claim some some responsibility for, for that there at some go. point. All right. All right. Well, this has been great. Yeah. yeah thanks so much for your time, Brian. Time. Thanks. Enjoyed it. And uh, as you can tell, uh, we're happy to talk. I, I'm happy. We're happy to talk about anything that that comes that comes up. So, uh, by all means, give us a shout. Sounds Excellent. good.